Hey, what's up, guys? It is Hacks to the Max here, bringing you another Pokemon Black and White 2 PL battle. But before we get started today, I would like to talk about my LP that I'm going to start. I have uh, recorded about two episodes from it. I'm not gonna tell you which game it is just yet because um, I want it to be a surprise. But I'm just sorting. I'm just sort of kind of waiting on a layout from Kevin Kinger because he he said he'd make me one, a really cool one. So uh, yeah, thanks to him. And um, yeah, just kind of waiting on that before I start uploading. I'm gonna upload. I'm gonna maybe like record about five, maybe probably by the time he finishes. But yeah, that's just a little update on the LP. But I kind of had time to upload today, which is why I wanted to upload a battle. It's a battle I had a while ago against Dash Quinn Brown on the PO server, and um, you can see it is the same team except I replaced Amoongus with Gliscor. I was kind of just testing around. Um, the Pokemon on my team because Amoongus just, eh, it's, it's not that bulky, so I just kind of wanted Gliscor. This is actually a sub-baton pass Gliscor for the lulls because, I was, it, again, it was just a test, and the battle actually turned out to be fairly good. But, um, later, I think I'm going to use the Sword Stance Gliscor after flying some acrobatics with the Sand Veil because before the Ben Sand Veil, I'm probably going to abuse it while I can, but looking at my opponent's team, um, he is using sand as well, and it looks like he just threw together a bunch of big threats on his team. I mean, the Landers, Haxorus, Genesec, Heatran, Terrakion, they're basically all monsters. So, um, let's see how I can play around that, basically. I'm going to lead off with my Ronan Wash, as always, as he's off with his Genesec. Most likely Scarfed in some way. I'm just going to go for the U-turn and switch out into his Heatran. He either predicted my Will-O-Wisp, or because I didn't outspeed him, or he predicted, like... Uh, or he was like specially defensive or something because why would you switch in a Heatran into a Rotom if you didn't predict something? But that's fine with me because he just gets up his rocks and I can take him out with two Hydro Pumps so that's fine with me because my team isn't overly weak to rocks anyways so um, that's just basically a threat down up to me on my side so um, now he's gonna go back out into his Genesec I know he's probably just gonna go for the U-turn which is why I'm gonna switch out into my own Genesec the Expert Belt one and I can take that U-turn fairly well but, and he's gonna go into his Tyranitar. This I did not understand, so I just went straight for the U-turn. But he actually just double switches back out into his Genesec, which um, I guess that's okay because I guess he didn't really have anything else to take the U-turn. Oh, ba basically just because his Heatran's gone now, so my Genesec can do a lot of work to his team. So I U-turn out into my Scarf Rakion, thinking I'll take it out with the Ghost Combat, but of course it lives with 1%, which is Dumb, man, come on, and then at least I can take him out with the next one, but I get hit with the powerful Thunderbolt doing over half of me, and I also have the special defense drop, but thankfully the sand is up, but now he can go out into his Landorus, I don't want to take like an Earthquake or ground type attack, so I switch out into my Rodom, he actually goes with the Earth Power, showing me he's the new Sheer Force Landorus, probably Life Orb, but he's actually going to go for the U-Turn and take me out, that actually surprised me because I haven't seen U-Turn on special Landoruses, so, um, but he goes into his Tyranitar, I'm gonna go into Terrapion to scare him out. I could have predicted the Landorus switch, but I just thought I was gonna play it safe and go for the close combat just because I knew it would do quite a bit to the Landorus, and if he did stay in, then my Terrapion would have been dead. But um, now I'm gonna go into my Gliscor, predicting him to go for the Earth Power. Um, and once again, just playing it safe, and I'm gonna activate my Toxic Orb. But I do know most special Landorus carry the HP Ice, which is why I'm gonna go scout for that double switch back out into my Genesec, seeing as he has that. And he does indeed have the HP Ice and his Life Orb, so... Um, now he's actually fearing me to be Scarfed and fearing the Ice Beam. I do go for the Ice Beam, unfortunately for him I do get a crit on his Tyranitar. I don't think it really matters because I'm extra spell, I can go for the U-turn, do quite a bit of damage to the Tyranitar, leaving him at low health, and I also do have my Gliscor. Um, he actually goes for a Super Power, probably thinking that's the best thing he had to take my Genesec, but um, I can switch out into my Gliscor, and here I probably thought that was the only thing that uh, he had to touch my Glide score uh, besides Crunch or something. Not for the sub, but he actually reveals the Ice Beam, which means I can't get a free sub up before I take out this Tyranitar. So I'm going for the Earthquake taking him out, which is why the Ice Beam crit probably did not matter, just because I, I can take him out with the Earthquake anyway. So now I can go into his landers. I do fear the HPI, so I'm going to check into my Genesec. But he actually predicts that, and he goes for the Earth Power. Um, not that it really matters because if he did go for the HP Ice, um, seeing as how much it did last time, it would have taken out my Genesec after Stealth Rocks anyway. So, um, not gonna switch out into my Specs Laddie as long as I out speed, and can go Draco Meteor anything on his team. He goes into Terrakion, knowing he couldn't take one just because his Sand is up with the special defense boost, but 
Um, yeah, I, I really don't want it to be Scarf and take me out with the uh, Stone at your X Scissor. But he actually predicts my switch and he goes for the Sword Stance. Good play on his part. And he also reveals the Rock Gem as well. So that Stone Edge will demolish my Gliscor just because I'm not physically defensive like that much. But because I do know he's Sword Stance now, I can go into my Latios and just take him out with the Sky Shock. But now he has a pre switch into his own Hatcherous. And again, I'm fearing the Scarf Hatcherous. Um, just because I don't want to take any chances, the Latios can basically clean up the rest of his team. But um, he goes for the Outrage, and by the damage, I'm thinking it might be Banded, um, just because it is in Haxor, so... And I don't see any, like, any other items, so I'm guessing he is Choice. I don't he's definitely not Scarf. But I can't go into Teraki, I'm thinking it'll take it out once again, but he lives the close combat with 11 this time, and he can take me out with the Outrage, so... Um, I kind of have to stop playing Teraki on, like, it's Banded, because... Scarf Terrakion isn't a whole lot that much powerful, but now I, I, my last Pokemon is my La Latios. Um, I'm banging on not being Scarf, just because his Genesect looked like it was Scarf, and I can bank up the Confusion Haps. Turns out he wasn't because I outspeed him, and his Landers is his last Poke. I know I can outspeed that as well, and take him out with the Psy Shock, so that is definitely a good game. Dash, Quinn, Brown, a close 1-0 actually in the end, but um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to uh, stay tuned for an LP coming up. I have few episodes saved up already. It's really fun, and I'm um, just waiting on that layout, like I said, but thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.